Welcome to Missile Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. This morning, after a six-month-long pause for final approvals of large renewable energy projects, Alberta Premier Daniel Smith and Minister of Affordabilities and Utilities Nathan Newdorf announced strict new rules for renewable energy developments in Alberta. Those new rules include, but are not limited to, the province will no longer permit renewable generation developments on Class 1 lands or Class 2 lands unless the developer can demonstrate the ability for both crops and or livestock to coexist with renewable generation projects. Developers will be responsible for reclamation costs via bonds or security. Buffer zones of a minimum of 35 kilometers will be established around protected areas and other pristine viewscapes as designated by the province. New wind projects will no longer be permitted within those buffer zones. Other proposed developments located within the buffer zones may be subject to visual impact assessments before approval. Any development of renewable development on Crown lands will be on a case-by-case -case basis moving forward. And most importantly for rural municipalities, municipalities will automatically have the right to take part in the Alberta Utility Commission's hearings on these new developments. Joining us today for this discussion is Reeve Jason Schneider of Vulcan County, whose insights offers a firsthand perspective on the impact of these policy changes and why he's calling it a win-win solution for rural municipalities. Reeve Schneider's remarks underscores the importance of a balanced and thoughtful approach to sustainable development, one that considers the needs of municipalities, residents, and developers alike. This is Municipal Affairs. Reeve, I want to thank you so much for doing this, for sitting down with me. Um, I just want to get your first initial reactions to the announcement earlier this morning from Premier Daniel Smith and Affordability and Utilities Minister Nathan Newdorf regarding the sort of uh, opening up of renewable developments after a six-month pause. Yeah, we were uh, we were pleasantly surprised with what came out of the uh, out of the uh, the whole process there. Uh, I think you're always a, a little bit worried uh, of uh, what the end result might be, um, but in, in the end, it it really addressed the concerns that we had here in Vulcan County, and I think it did them in a very fair and uh, reasonable way. Uh, there really wasn't anything that uh, that stuck out to me that would uh, you know kill renewable activity here in uh, Vulcan County, uh, wind or solar. Uh, and I, I think that the developers that we've worked with so far voluntarily were doing most of this on their own. So uh, I, I don't really see this uh, being too big of a deal for them. But I do think it does set a little bit higher bar for, for some of the, you know, the second, third, and fourth wave of developers that we were starting to see knocking on our door. So what was the big takeaway for yourself from someone who was looking at this pause back in September when we originally talked, uh, sort of with an optimistic view of what's going to the province going to do after today's announcement? What was the key takeaway for yourself? Well, the the big points that we were uh, uh, bringing up, they they were listened to, and uh, Minister Newdorf uh, has been absolutely fantastic in this process, uh, giving us the opportunity. And you know, we're we're a pretty unique uh, municipality. I, I we by far have the most uh, built renewable wind and solar in the province. Uh, so they really were uh, very interested to see kind of what we'd learned over the last ten years and. Uh, yeah, in the end, uh, you know, we we weren't looking for policies that were going to, you know, stifle the industry. We were just wanting to make sure that everybody was was uh, playing by the same rules and that, you know, some of these uh, things were being considered. Because unfortunately, uh, as it is in every industry, the industry involves quicker than the regulators. And that's just what had happened, uh, you know, 10 years ago. If you would have said we wanted to build 3,000 acres of solar panels, People would have said that's not like there's no way you can't do it. And hey, here you go, Vulcan County as an example. We've got 3,200 acres of panels, and uh, so yeah, this is really I think just the the regulations now catching up with industry. And uh, yeah, I mean you, we were we were happy to see that there wasn't anything that uh, was too onerous or was going to kill it. And I, I prime example is this morning Vulcan County just approved two more solar projects in our boundaries at our planning commission. So uh, I don't think this scared off developers, which was uh, definitely the message we sent to the minister and to the provinces, you know, let's do do it right, but don't don't go overboard either. 
one of the big takeaways that I took away from today's press conference, and the only reason I, I it sort of perked my interest was because I'd just spoken to Paul McLaughlin, president of RMA, about zombie oil and gas companies not paying their property taxes is under these new rules, developers will be responsible for reclamation costs via security and bonds. This must be a big win for rural municipalities who are kind of in a tough spot with oil and gas companies. They don't want to have that same effect for renewable energy developers. Yeah, it's huge. We we definitely have that fresh in our minds, uh, oil and gas uh, stiffing us and uh, walking away from their liabilities. And they're not the first industry. We, we've we got uh, gravel pits that walked away from their liabilities too. Like this is this is kind of an Alberta way is uh, the cheapest reclamation plan is bankruptcy. And uh, we didn't want to, we didn't want to be sitting here in 20 years going like, who who could have imagined that you know these companies walked away when it was time to clean up so yeah it's it's nice that uh you know they they have set those uh those now and i mean the devil's in the details we'll see what we'll see what those bonds look like but uh you know the the fact that the the government is party to that and it does appear that these reclamation bonds will be a lot more public i think that's going to put a lot of people's fears to rest because uh i think i think a lot of the developers were probably already doing this but there were some that weren't, and that's and that's why we have to. Uh, ha that's why we needed the regulations updated. Is it's not for the ninety percent of good developers. It's for the ten percent who are trying to cut corners, uh, make a quick buck, and then you know pass that liability on to someone else. Does it give it give you hope that today's announcement also sort of said that municipalities will now be able to take part in the AUC's uh, ongoing commission hearings around these developments, so that way municipalities do have a somewhat of a voice at the table. Yeah, we were very happy to see that we were uh, recognized in a little in a much more formal way. Uh, we could. We could participate, but we weren't necessarily considered to be an affected party, which was a head scratcher because I mean, we're, we're the municipality where this development's going into. Like, uh, we, we kind of do have an interest. So, um, it is nice to be formally recognized as well as, uh, they will allow, uh, for some cost recovery, which, you know, might not sound like a big deal, but for a small municipality like ours, uh, to participate in an eight day hearing with legal counsel and and, and uh, experts and staff and counsel, uh, it's you can rack up a pretty big bill pretty uh, pretty quickly. So this does this does help the smaller municipalities. Um, it removes that financial barrier that uh, they had. And and I mean, I I talked to some municipalities who just said we couldn't afford to participate, so we just kind of crossed our fingers and hoped for the best. And that's that's not what that's not how this process was ever supposed to be. So this that that remedies it, and we were very appreciative that the province uh, was willing to do that. While it seems like you are cautiously optimistic about this new rollout, is there anything that you have sort of seen so far in the early hours of this announcement as of recording this that you're saying, okay, maybe we need to dive into this a little bit deeper with the minister or the premier before we sort of give our complete rubber stamp and say we we agree with everything that the government has rolled out? Yeah, yeah, cautious, uh, cautiously <laughs> optimistic is is the correct term for this. Um, uh, I, I think the a couple of the points uh, do need uh, a little more work, and that's the transmission aspect. Um, that's a complicated can of worms, and uh, you know we we are of the opinion that that all needs to be contemplated at the same time as opposed to how it is. And they've made reference that they are updating those regulations, but uh, that is now something uh, we will definitely be making sure that uh, we have further conversations because it is it it was one of the more controversial things, believe it or not, just because uh, as these new waves of developers came in, they were just plunking development wherever because you didn't have to talk about transmission lines. Well, you know, if when you need to build 30 kilometers of transmission lines to service a small solar uh, installation, you would think as a reasonable person that maybe that's not the perfect spot. Why don't you move 30 kilometers closer? And, and uh, you know, so it does appear now that they are uh, going to make them put a little more skin in the game because previously, uh, you know, the province, uh, you as a uh, as a uh, resident paid for the tra those transmission lines, you know, the company built them and then sold them back. And uh, so these some of these developers weren't too worried if it was 10, 20, 30 kilometers of lines because they got they got them paid for by someone else. So uh, very, very happy with that, but uh, definitely need to have more conversations and get that process right uh, because it is a big, uh, big part of it. Um, and then obviously the crown lands thing that's uh, they have recognized that they need, they need some more consultation and uh, 
uh, as a municipality that does have a fair amount of crown land on the eastern side of our, our county. I think that is that is important. I'm glad they didn't just rush to something, uh, just rush to, to do it as part of this. They have separated that out. Uh, so uh, we do look forward to further consultations on that because that is uh, it is a uh, that is a very unique situation when it comes to crown lands and uh, and large scale uh, industrial developments. The province has said that there will be no and under no circumstances no permit renew for new renewable generation developments on class one and class two lands. I I I, I don't know Vulcan County as well as you do, so I've got to ask: Does this affect Vulcan County, or is this sort of not going to affect you as much, or is this going to sort of pigeonhole the community into where people can develop renewable energy projects in your a great county? Yeah, so we we don't have a whole lot of class two. Uh, I I probably should look at it a little closer, but I don't know if we necessarily even have any. I uh, just just the types of soil that we have in southern Alberta. It, it, we we are a bit unique, and uh, it can be a little dry down here. But uh, it it is nice that they are contemplating uh, soil types because that was not part of the previous uh, uh, process with AUC. That was not a consideration, which always puzzled us. And uh, but part of that. Um, Part of that um, announcement with the class one and two, they also uh, said that they will be developing the tools necessary to ensure uh, native grasslands, irrigatable and productive lands continue to be available for agriculture production. We like that. That's that's uh, that was the message we were trying to. Why, to why, send did, why did you like that? Uh, just because, uh, you know, that even goes uh, like we have class three soils under irrigation, which can produce as much if not more than a class one soil elsewhere or a class two soil elsewhere. Uh, so for a municipality like ours, that does give us a little bit of a teeth to have that conversation. Because honestly, we've we've had that policy in Vulcan County for probably the last, since 1954 when we were incorporated uh, to to make sure that when we are making you know decisions, we are, we are trying to you know, put them in the, where it makes sense. And we're not taking taking high production land out just because it's convenient or it's easier or, you know, and, you know, we've had good success. Like our, our major projects have all been located on probably some of the poorest lands in Southern Alberta. And that was, that was in conjunction with the developer in the county looking for a spot where it would have the least amount of impact. And, you know, our develop, the developers we worked with were very cognizant of that. They did not want to be, putting it on high production land. Now, once again, once you get to the second, third and fourth wave of developers, it's like, you know, all land in Vulcan County looks the same when you're sitting at a desk in Toronto and, you know, looking at a map, right? And we started to, we started to get, uh, you know, some, some ideas floated, some projects floated that were in, in the best lands in the county. And it was like, you know, there's, there's a lot of other space that you could definitely use. It would be much more suitable. And, and, but when the AUC didn't, didn't have that as consideration, the developers were like, yeah, well, you know, if they don't care, why should we care? And why do you care? And so we, we are glad that it is, it is referenced. And now we have, now we get to have that conversation um, if it is being proposed on higher production or land that has irrigation potential. So uh, yeah, that's, I guess that's why, that's why that one kind of stuck out to me and uh, and made uh, made us pretty happy that they they did take this into consideration. So looking back on the last six months, I'm assuming developers have not stopped knocking on your door in Vulcan County, as you just admitted. You re, you approved two new uh, projects just today as this announcement was going on. Um, looking back, are you going to be reaching out to the developers who had come knocking on your door and saying, okay, let's have these conversations now? Or had these conversations unofficially, officially been going on previous to this announcement this morning? Yeah, these conversations continued. We we they they didn't stop. I mean, I I think some probably slowed their process a little bit just to see what came out of this. But um, no, we we've continued to be working with potential uh, uh, developers and uh, the the whole time. And I, I don't know. I none of them seemed too worried uh, about it. Like I think they were. You know, it was all like, how much more is this going to cost us? And that that's really the was the biggest question. And and ultimately, I, I don't think this necessarily costs too much more. Maybe, maybe you have to put up a little more reclamation security than you were hoping to. But uh, outside of that, I, I, I think that the good developers that we work with had done all of this already uh, on their own. Uh, so I, I don't see why this is going to change things. And yeah, yeah, 
literally today, uh, the developers are still are still going through the whole process here at the county. So I, I guess that's a good sign. I guess they it didn't scare them enough to uh, pull their pull their uh, application. You called this a win-win uh, for not only the municipalities and developers, but also for the residents. And I want to just ask a few questions on the residents' perspective. When this pause was going on, did you hear from residents of Vulcan County, and what were they telling you? Well, they just wanted to. They just wanted answers, um, and uh, you know, they had concerns, and uh, you know. <laughs> on things like reclamation, where it was said, no, don't worry, we got this. And I mean, we're, we've all been around long enough to know when someone says, I got this, they don't got this. It's, uh, you it's know, in the it's, mail. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know we we we've all been stung by the oil and gas industry here uh, with the shallow gas uh, issues that uh, Southern Alberta has experienced. So uh, um, I, I think that's a win where they're going to have that assurance that it's like we're not going to be picking up the bill down the road. Um, also, just the the transmission aspect of it that was that was extremely controversial here, just because uh, when you tell your all your neighbors around, guess what? You're going to get transmission lines running through your land. And you can't stop it. And, you know, we'll just expropriate it if we need to. And you go, ah, like, so at least at least that's a little more, uh, you know, going to be laid out and we'll, we'll see what the fine details are. But I, I think that is going to, uh, you know, definitely make make it a little more of a win for them because, uh, you know, you're not going to necessarily be impacted so that your neighbor can put a a solar in the middle of somewhere it probably shouldn't be. So uh, I think on those ones, it's just going to give the the neighbors and the members of the community a little more assurance. This is actually being done right, and this isn't just the is this isn't the wild west. And you know we're going to clean up. We're going to have a mess in twenty years to clean up. My last question for you: um, We talked six months ago, literally September, almost to the day, uh, uh, talking about this issue. And as I said at the beginning, you were optimistic about the potential of uh, this review. Now we are at the day where the review has been done and the results have been. Are you cautious that these new changes will benefit and make the renewable sector stronger than it was prior to this review start? I think so. I think this is going to actually make it easier for legitimate developers to get their projects uh, going and uh, get it through the regulation process, uh, just because a lot of the questions are going to be answered up front. And a lot of the concerns are going to be taken care of before you even, you know, put your application in. So I, I think in the end, it's going to be better for the industry. I, there's probably some some companies that have been speculating and, you know, trying to get projects to sell to the next guy. Uh, you know, they they might get caught and maybe this, you know, they, they won't be so happy. But overall, for an industry, um, I, I think this is actually going to be a pretty positive thing. And, and like I said, I don't think any of these are too uh, onerous. I think if you are legitimately wanting to do a sustainable long-term project, these all of these are pretty reasonable and, and shouldn't add too much more cost to it. Jason, always a pleasure to sit down with you and chat about renewable energy with the Bereave of Vulcan County. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit the subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth cross-border interviews and our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. Now, we're your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. Your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy over the last few months. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.